Hey guys, I hope that you're having a blessed and wonderful day. I know that it's been um, just a little bit before I've made a video, but like I always like to say, I never, ever, ever make a video unless the Lord tells me to. And um, if you've seen in some of my previous stuff that I have sent out, it has been dreams that I have had about churches. And this is what I'm going to release again. Um, I had a, another dream on 215 about some churches, and then I had another one last night. And I know within the dream that I had last night, I actually wrote a message out. And I can only remember a little bit of it, but I do remember specifically the scriptures that I told this church. Um, in the first dream that I had, it was on 215 of 2022. And I'll just tell you very quickly, it was very straight to the point. I was inside of two churches. And the first church that I was in, there was a long, long, long snake. It was probably 100 feet long. And it was huge and um, white and had black spots on it. And the pastor of that church was holding the snake by a leash. So it was like its pet, okay? It was literally like we would have a dog on a leash or, you know, an animal on a leash. Um, and it was literally, you know, being led by, the snake was being led by the pastor. So um, the Lord first gave me the scripture, 1 Timothy 4 and 1 through 2. So let's get out your Bibles with me and go along with me really quick, please. Um I like for you guys to read the word yourself, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version. First Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit expressively says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So what the Lord was showing me in this is that there have been a lot of false doctrines. There's been a lot of false teachings and that the pastors or the shepherds of these churches are actually, they actually have the devil on a leash. Like they're actually controlling the things that are going on because they are giving to the doctrine of demons. Okay. Another scripture that he gave me is um, Colossians 2 and 8. Like I said, I want you guys to read these along with me. Right before Thessalonians. Colossians 2 and 8. And it says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principle of the world, and not according to Christ. 9. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, bodily and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power so don't let anyone cheat you into believing the philosophies the empty deceits according to the traditions of men so this was what these dreams were about okay it was about the tradi traditions of men that many people are still following and idolizing a man idolizing men women, leaders, whoever, you're idolizing them as your shepherd, you know, your shepherd, your pastor, you're idolizing them above God. You are more, you know, amped to please man than you are God. And, you know, Galatians 1.10 says that we cannot please man above God. And you have literally been deceived into believing false doctrines and, 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 you know, deceived by the doctrines of devils. And you don't see that these leaders are literally leading you into a pit. They're literally leading you into a fire hole. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a fox hole. They're, they're leading you down the wrong road. The road to destruction. And you know, the Lord's been really um, speaking to me a lot about heart knowledge and head knowledge. And how so many people have head knowledge. 
Like they believe, you know, that Jesus is Lord in head knowledge, but heart knowledge, you know, like they believe that he is Lord. They believe in Jesus as Lord, but they confess it with their mouths that he is Lord, but their hearts are far from him. So um, let's go to Isaiah 29 and 13, because this is going to go into my next dream. My next dream was the dream that I had last night. And I was literally inside of another church and it was completely dead. It was completely spiritually dead, completely. And I was just looking around watching and observing everything that was going on and everybody was just literally spiritually dead. Um, and they would not worship in spirit and truth and they were hindering the Holy Spirit. They would not allow, you know, the gifts of the spirit. They would not allow, um, it was just the traditions of men. They were literally um, wearing like a choir outfits and they were literally following along with every single thing that their leader said to do. Everything that their leader said to do, they did, but they were not listening to God. They were not listening to the voice of God. I'm not saying that your leader, that leaders do not lead as far as give advice and guidance and shepherding and, and caring for the flock and all those things. Of course they do. You know, as leaders, we give people wisdom from the Lord. You know, we seek the Lord on their behalf to give them um, the wisdom that they need, right? For for making decisions, for, for doing certain things. Um, shepherds feed the flock, right? But we have to understand that the ultimate authority is Christ, is Jesus. And we have to be getting all of that from him. It can't be from the traditions of men. It can't be from the doing things traditionally, things that are in our culture, things that hinder the Holy Spirit. You know, things that are cheap through philosophy and empty deceit. We have to be aware of this, guys. Woe to the shepherds that have literally scattered the flock. Woe to the shepherds that are, that are you know, en encompassed by this um, doctrine of demons. And they're literally, they've got the devil right around, you know, just holding him around like, like, like you have a pet. And, and I've seen these churches. And in the first dream that I had, literally I was running from these churches. I was running from these churches. And I finally found a bathroom. And whenever I found a bathroom, that means repentance. That means um, cleansing, purification. And then I got on a train and I left. Because we cannot be apart. You guys, if you are in a church right now that literally has, it's just about the traditions of men. It's literally bound in religion and, 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 and everything in this world. It's succumbed to everything in this world. It's literally bowed like Nebuchadnezzar. Like, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was going to have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bow down. And they wouldn't bow down. But there's a lot of these churches and these leaders, these pastors, that have bowed down to Nebuchadnezzar. They have bowed down to the beast system. And they have literally allowed the Antichrist and Jezebel to come in and literally destroy everything that God has ordained. So not every place that you see is a, that has a church sign is actually ordained by God. Not every place that has a person that has a, you know, is a leader or says they are a pastor is really walking in the way in the will of the Lord. You have to test every spirit, you guys. You have to pray for discernment. If you do not have discernment, you have to pray for discernment. Because I am telling you, there's a lot of leaders that are leading you astray. And it's a woe. That means judgment is coming. And judgment always comes to the house of the Lord before it comes anywhere else, right? And I've been saying that for a long time now. But let's go to Isaiah 29 and 13. And then I can tell some of the, the rest of my dream. 29 and 13. And it says, And the Lord says, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Do you hear that, guys? Do you hear that? Inasmuch as these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Do you have head knowledge of Jesus? Do you, know, do you have heart knowledge? And what do I mean by that? I mean that literally in your head, yes, you believe. You believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. You say out of your mouth you believe in Jesus. But you know that your heart is far from him. 
You don't have the heart knowledge. You don't have the full belief because we cannot, yes, hearing, you know, we hear the word of God, right? And then we act on the word of God. But James 1, through 25 literally tells us that we can not only be hearers of the word of God, we have to be doers of his word. That means we have to action. We have to walk it out. We are known by our fruit. We're not known by the, or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're known by the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, forbearance, self-control. We're known by those things. We're not known by our gifts. We're known by the fruit and you will know them. What does Matthew tell us? You will know them by their fruit. Look at the leaders you're listening to. What does the fruit say? They're producing fruit. It's either rotten or it's pure. Have you been deceived into, into listening to the doctrine of devils, of demons? Are you literally sitting in a church that is spiritually dead? You need to run, 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 run now. I am telling you in the name of Jesus, it's time to go. Get up and go. Get up and go. In this church that I was in last night, literally, the Lord was showing me. I was observing. And what I write on, I'm, I, I'm in this church and I'm writing a note to them. And I'm literally writing out this big, huge, it's a, um, you know, like a poster board. It was a poster board and marker and I'm writing in blue and blue means revelation. Blue means, um, vision, wisdom, you know, all of those things. So I'm literally writing it out and I would, I could, it was because of their worship. They were not worshiping in spirit and in truth. They weren't. They were bound in religion in the traditions of men. And these are the scriptures that he gave me. So Isaiah 29, 13, Ezekiel 33 and 31. Give me a minute while I am. Digging in the word here. Ezekiel 33 and 31. And it says, So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouth, they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. This is the, the shepherds that he is showing me in these churches. It's for their own gain, you guys. It's for their own gain. With their mouth, they say so much love about Jesus. They, they want to show so much love, you know, by their mouth, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Woe to you. Woe to you. Matthew 15. Going to the New Testament now. We're going to be going over, all over the place with scriptures. I'll put these in the description box. He's just had me on a journey on this, you guys. And like I said, when he gives me a dream more than once, I know it's time to release. And I've just been sitting on it and sitting on it. And then when I had the dream last night, I was like, okay. All right, Lord. I hear you loud and clear. 15. 7 through 9. Then it says, Hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And that's exactly what he was showing me in all of these churches that he's showing me. It's literally the doctrines of men. It's not the doctrines of the Lord. It's not the word. They literally have Satan by a leash. They are literally being controlled and controlling the devil himself. 
They have quenched the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Matthew 15 and 3 says, And he answered and said, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God, then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. By your own tradition. What have you believed that is your own tradition? That's not of the Bible. That's not of the word of God. That is not what the Lord said. Listen, there's nothing wrong with going to your shepherds to get guidance and wisdom and all that. But have you asked the Lord? I ask people that all the time before they come to me about anything. Have you talked to the Lord about this? Have you prayed about this? Have you fasted about this? Have you asked the Lord for godly wisdom? Because I'm going to pray for, for the Lord to give me godly wisdom on your behalf. But have you asked the Lord, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you as it does me. I'm no different. As a leader, I'm no different. Do you seek the Lord or do you seek the approval of man? Have you believed in the doctrine of demons? Do you know that the demons even believe in the word? They tremble at the sound of Jesus. They're cast out in the name of Jesus. You know, James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourself therefore and then you, you know, the demons will flee. The devil will flee when you submit yourself to the Lord. Are you blinded? Have you been deceived into being in one of these churches that are literally bound in the doctrine of demons? Matthew 2, 22. No, Mark 2, 22, sorry. Two and 22 says, and no one puts new wine skin into old wine skins or else the new wine bursts. The wine skins, the wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined, but new wine must be put into new wine skins. So in my dream, after I'm literally writing out the message about them worshiping not in spirit and truth and that they need to worship in spirit and in truth, um, the Lord gives me the scripture in, in my dream and I say to their leader, you cannot put new wine skins in old, I mean, you can't put new wine in old wine skins. You cannot put new wine in old wine skins. So what the Lord wants to do, the Isaiah 43, the new thing that the Lord wants to do in you, you can't, you cannot keep trying to do the old thing. When the Lord wants to do the new thing, you can't put the new wine in the old wine skin, in your old wine skin. He can't put the new wine in the old wine skin. Something has to break. The traditions of men have to break in the name of Jesus. The vain deceit, the cheap vain deceit, the blindness, the scales must fall from the eyes in the name of Jesus. The, the believing of the doctrine of demons has to go in the name of Jesus. He wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to do the new thing, but you keep wanting to stay the same. And he can't pour the new wine in. You have to go through the cleansing. You have to go through the purification. You have to go through the repenting. And you have to get rid of the old in order for him to do the new. It has to be a new wine skin. So that wine, when it comes in, it can expand. And it can do what only God can do through you. The old is the old religion. The traditions of men. You have to crucify that. You have to get rid of it. Because that quenches the Holy Spirit. And therefore, he can't do the new thing in you. He can't pour the new wine in. Because you're literally still living in the old. You're still bound in traditions of men. 
Matthew 9, 16 through 17. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. So that means if I have some new jeans and they have a hole in them, I'm not going to put an old shrunken cloth on there on my pants because it's gonna eventually tear apart. It's gonna be temporary, it's temporary. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskin break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. You wonder why you're still bound. You wonder why things haven't changed. It's because the Lord wants to do something new in you, but you are still, you are still bound in religion. You are still bound in head knowledge and not heart knowledge. You are still bound in the same belief the demons have. And it's all because of the traditions of men. You have been following the traditions of men. And a woe is coming to them. The, the, the men that have literally, and the women, and whoever else has led you into this religious part. That has literally made you bow down to these idols. It's idolatry. It's idolatry and it's keeping you bound. Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10. And it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. John 4, 23 through 24. The Lord tests our heart. He knows who has head knowledge only and who has heart knowledge. He knows who is his. He knows who confesses with their mouth that they love the Lord, but their heart is far from him. You can't hide from him. You can't hide from him anymore. He knows the heart, guys. He looks at the heart. John 4, 23 through 24. <clears throat> but the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. That is what I was telling this church. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. But so many are 1 Thessalonians 5.19. They're quenching the spirit. You better get up and out of that dead church. That is quenched the spirit. That has not allowed the Holy Spirit to move. That is not allowed the gift of the Holy Spirit. That have literally just been doing the same old thing. It's the same old thing. It's the same old ritual. The same old religious mess. It's got to go. Religion will send you to hell. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. It is only through Jesus. It's only through Jesus, and it's not just by saying and believing in your head. What is your heart speaking? What is the fruit that's coming out of your heart? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you speaking out? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I'm, I'm begging you to stop believing John 8 and 44, the father of all lies. These leaders have literally been speaking to you from the father of all lies. They have allowed the Antichrist spirit to come in, allowed Jezebel to come in. They have allowed all these things of the world, all these traditions of the world to come in, all this idolatry to come in. They have literally ate the fruit. Deceit. And then the juice of their fruit is rubbing off on you. And bad company corrupts good character. 
1 Corinthians 15, 33. What fruit are you listening to? Mark 7 and 8. It's time to test the spirits, guys. Mark 7, 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who cursed his father and mother, let him be put to death. But if you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is, is um, Corbin, that is gift, gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through the tradition which you have handed down. And many such things you do. When he called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone. This is Jesus speaking. Hear me, everyone. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears, let him hear. If you have ears, let you hear in the name of Jesus. The tra traditions of man pull you away from God. They pull you away from God. Because he literally says, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Have you fallen victim to this? It's time to repent. It's time to wake up. Colossians 2, 22. Which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, false humility, and neglect of the body, excuse me, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Go to 20. It says, therefore, if you die with Christ from the basic principle to the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? 21. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandment of doctrines of men. This is all the doctrines of men. The rules, the regulations, doctrines of men. You can't wear this, you can't wear that, legalism. You can't wear makeup, you can't do this, you can't do that. Guys, it's false. It's false. It's the traditions of men. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the, all the Cs. Have you fallen victim to this? Have you quenched the spirit? Let's go on over to Jude. <clears throat> I have several Bibles, and this is one of my newest ones, so the um, the pages are still kind of together because I'm just now starting to use it because I like different versions. I like um, to study the Word of God and, and like, in depth, you know? <clears throat> Go on over to Jude. We're going to start in... Jude 3, Jude 1 and 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our, our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly, earnestly, earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, 
who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their promise, their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life. He's talking about the Nephilim. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a rivaling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them! For they have gone in a way of Cain, have run greedily in the error of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in their love feast, while they feast with you without fear serving only themselves you guys it's only to serve themselves they are clouds without water carried about by the winds late autumn trees without fruit twice dead pulled up by the roots raging waves of the sea foaming up their own shame wandering stars from whom is reserved the blackest of darkness forever now enoch the seventh from adam prophesied about these men also saying behold the lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute ju judgment on them all, to convict all who are ungodly among them and all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. Listen to this. These are the leaders that are leading the doctrine of demons that literally have these snakes by the leash flattering people let's see according to their own lust and they mouth great swelling words charmers guys like the snake they're charmers flattering people to gain advantage but you beloved remember the words which were spoken by the apostles of the lord jesus christ how they told you that there would be mockers in the last days in the last time, who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. This is what's happening. This is what I'm warning you about. This is what I'm warning you about, guys. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So see, when we see this happening, we are called to have compassion and to literally pull people out of the fire to tell them and warn them about this. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So we literally just read all of Jude, you guys. And it's literally talking about everything that we are talking about. These are all the scriptures that the Lord has given me. I mean, among so many others, I could literally go through all of this. And I, I didn't want to make this, you know, super, super long. But I just wanted to make you aware that once again, if you are a part of these churches, you know, you need to be testing the spirit. You need to be praying for discernment, you guys. And woe to the shepherds. Uh, it's another warning out to the shepherds right now that are literally walking and, and speaking out these vain deceits and, and speaking out this deception and following the beast system. It's a warning to you. Judgment is coming to you. Woe to you, shepherds who have scattered the sheep that have not cared for them, that have literally been after their own gain, their own pride. You know, I mean, the cost of someone's soul for you to become rich, 
woe to you. Woe to you. And these religious churches that are bound in the traditions of men, the idolatry, all of it. Guys, you got to get out. You got to get out. I'm telling you right now, it's time to worship in spirit and in truth. And the Lord knows who is his. The Lord knows that heart knowledge. He searches the heart. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would search your heart today and, and ask the Lord for the, the scales to fall from the eyes, just like Saul transformed to Paul, that conversion that took place in him. You know, you can no longer find, follow the traditions of men, the idolatry, the worshiping of men and, and pleasing of men. You know, you can't be a lover of this world any longer. And that's loving the world. That's loving everything of the world. That's loving the flesh above God. So I pray in the name of Jesus that who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I pray that you would repent. I pray that you would come back to, the, to Jesus in a full heart knowledge of him. In a full belief of him. Because like I said, even the demons believe in him. You can't just say out of your mouth that you believe in him and your heart be far from him. And the Lord knows your heart. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would heed this warning and understand that it is time to break free of the traditions of men. All the religions got to go in the name of Jesus so the Lord can pour that new wine in you. Have a lovely and wonderful day.